Hey, what's up guys? My name is Travis, and this video looks pretty bad, and it sounds pretty bad, but just wait, because I'm going to show you how to get an image that looks like this. And boom, just like that, we have this image. And today we're going to show you how we did this right here. So to start off, there's a lot of things that we want to fix, but the very first thing that I kind of want to go over is audio. So one thing that will greatly improve the production value of your videos is having good audio. So as you can see, we got a fan going on in the background. It, it sounds really bad, so we're going to turn off the fan. How it affects the sound. Now the fan's turned off, okay? And we're recording on the internal mic of my 70D. So we're going to plug in my Rode VideoMic Pro so you guys can hear the difference between the internal mic on the camera and a nice professional external mic like this one. Okay, so this is the Rode VideoMic Pro and it sounds a whole lot better. And one thing that I want you to understand is that if you have great audio, people will forgive having mediocre to bad quality video. But if you have bad audio on your video, it makes you look like an amateur automatically. So you really need to make sure you have a good microphone and that you're getting good sound with your video. The next thing we're gonna fix in this image is the white balance. So you'll notice I'm an orange color. This isn't actually how it looks in the room. This is how the camera is interpreting the white colors. Um, I think this room is a, a tungsten light. So we're gonna put the setting from cloudy, which is what it's on right now, to tungsten. And let's see what difference that makes. Okay, cool. So now that the white balance is set, um, this, this image is looking a whole lot better. You'll see that I'm not that orange color anymore. You can see the gray in my shirt as well as the skin tones on my face. So this is getting a little bit better. Um, but you'll notice that there's shadows on, on my face and stuff like that. And we're also using the light that's in this room to light me. Another one of the biggest ways to get a professional looking image is with your lighting. So right now you'll notice I'm using the room light. It's a, you know, a fan light over here. Um, this lamp is off and that's the only light I have going on. There's shadows on my face and if you really want to have a great looking image, maybe you don't really have a great camera or you have a decent camera, but if you have good lighting, it'll make you look good. So we're going to change some things in this room to see if we can get this to look a, a little bit cooler, okay? So, you'll see right here that I have my camera, the microphone, it's on a little tripod right there, and I put this lamp right here to kind of shine some light on my face. And we're going to turn the lamp on and we're going to see what it does. Because I have all these shadows on my face, as you can see, um, and, and we don't want that. We want there to be some key light on my face and we're kind of going to go for like a cinematic look. So I'm going to turn on this lamp and we're going to see what it does. Okay, wow. So our ISO on the camera is set to 3200 and that's like, that's, that's pretty high. I would actually, on these older Canon cameras, the newer cameras you could put the ISO higher but for these kinds of DSLRs, it's really better to not go over 1600 unless you have to. Or maybe you'll go higher, but you're okay with the noise that it's adding. I look like a ghost right now, okay? And that's because I'm overexposed. But the problem with overexposing a shot is once this shot is overexposed, you can't get these details back. Okay, so you want to make sure that when you're setting your ISO and you're setting your shutter speed and you're setting your aperture that you're not overexposing because you won't be able to really fix it in post. I'm going to put the ISO down to, let's try, 
Oops, not higher. Okay. Okay. Cool. Okay, so you'll see some of the details are coming back. Okay, that looks okay. We'll try that. So now you'll notice that there's not the shadows on my face anymore. Um, there's some shadow back there. Um, and another thing that you really want to keep in mind is when you're lighting something, both of these lights that I have in here, they're warmer lights, but sometimes when you put a white light next to an orange light, it can kind of mix the colors and it will throw off the white balance on your camera. So you just have to be careful of that. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and turn off this big light up here and we're going to see what just this light looks like. Okay, so this is the light. This is me. This is my camera. We're getting somewhere. Very cool. Very cool. Okay. So now this is kind of cool. Um, I'm going to turn on this lamp in the, you know, in the background because it's going to like add a little bit. A little bit of ambiance. So it kind of adds a little bit. So you got a little bit of ambiance right there. We have this really bright light that's pointed at me. And it's actually casting this shadow right back here. And what you can do to kind of soften the light, make it a little less harsh, and allow it to spread a little bit more evenly um, is to get a diffuser, to diffuse the light somehow. And I actually have some paper that I'm gonna put over the light and we're gonna see if we can make the light a little bit softer so there's less shadows going on back there and it's not like super contrasty looking because it's like really bright on my face right now. Um, let's, let's try this. Look paper but what's cool about this paper is you can kind of you can almost you can almost see through it you can almost I know it's kind of hard to tell but you, you can kind of see through this paper so we're gonna just move it on the light a little bit and see what it does okay so now you'll notice that the light's a little bit softer. That shadow isn't as obnoxious in the background. And this image kind of looks more cinematic. Now this is the point where I'm actually kind of enjoying how this looks. Um, you know, and it's kind of hard to tell when you look at this little screen. Let's see how this, how this looks right now. So this is the image that we're getting right now. And this is literally our setup, okay? I have a lamp right there. This is, this is one light, like literally one light. The camera's right there, it's pointed at me. And I have a lamp right there. So I'm only using two lights, but you know, if you wanted to, you could add another light over here. But I kind of like this very cinematic, personal sort of look. And let me tell you why it looks cinematic. Let me just point out some things. At this point in the filming, I'm looking at this little screen and I'm like, okay, is it bright enough? Do I need to make it a little bit brighter? So let me see how it looks. We'll just go like one click. Okay. Yeah, so, I mean, that's kind of cool. Um, a very flattering look when you're using shadows in your shot like I am right now. It's kind of cool to have this little shadow under the chin. If you have rolls, it will, it will help hide them. Um, you'll see there's a little bit of shadow over here because the light is coming from the side. And that's kind of how we're used to seeing light because that's how the sun works. Like you have this giant orb and it just points, you know, so that's kind of what we're doing right now. And yeah, I'm pretty pleased with this image. We went from this, wow, um, so to this. This is a much better um, image in my opinion. And it's only two lights. It's literally a, a lamp that I found at my mom's house, another lamp, 
and then um, just adjusting some settings on the camera. And if your camera has manual settings, like you can totally do all of this stuff.